हेलो फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम दिस लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टिंग चैप्टर टू सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स इन चैप्टर वन यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट रिप्रोडक्शन ए सेक्शुअल एंड सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन हियर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन डिटेल अबाउट सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स एज यू नो फ्लावर इज अ फैसिनेटिंग ऑर्गन ऑफ एनजियोस्पम It is having aesthetic, ornamental, social, religious, and cultural value. It is also a symbol of conveying important human feelings. But for a student, for a biologist, what is it? Actually, it is a morphological and embryological marvel, site of sexual reproduction, because flower possesses male and female. sexual reproductive organs that's why first of all pre fertilization structures and events how does flower develop we know it very well at maturity in plants flowering plants inflorescence develop it develops floral buds on which flowers develop during this time period hormonal and structural changes lead differentiation and further development so this way in flowering plants during sexual reproduction period these changes are observed in typical flower structure there are four whorls observed calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium as a male structure here androecium is present which possesses stamens as a female structure it possesses gynoecium having carpels so for male structure stamen is a basic unit and for female structure carpel is a basic unit for flowering plant stamen microsporangium and pollen grain now we are going to study the structures in detail stamen stamen possesses two parts anther and filament first anther generally in angiosperm plants it is bilobed structure diathecus we can study in ts of anther four sided structure during maturity four microsporangium develop it develop further pollen sacs develop here within this pollen sacs pollen grains develop which is a main component for sexual reproduction second part filament in various plant this filament is a various length type of structure between anther and filament the structure groove is observed that is actually known as connective so in stamen three parts observe anther connective and filament within anther pollen grains develop at maturity and it is liberated for the purpose of pollination now structure of microsporangium we can study in detail by taking ts or transverse section of microsporangium it shows four wall layers this four layers are epidermis endothecium middle layer and tapetum out of this four layers first three epidermis endothecium and middle layer they are protective they are helpful in digestion process at maturity for liberation or release of pollen grain fourth layer is tapetum it is required for nourishment to developing pollen grains so in ts of this structure we can observe this four layers clearly in young anther sporogenous tissue is observed through further development pollen grains form here 
now microsporogenesis process in this mechanism microspores pollen grains develop from sporogenous tissue how does this development take place first of all sporogenous tissue undergo cell division meiosis it means reduction division from two and n structure is formed sporogenous tissue divides and microspore tetrad is formed from microspore tetrad further cell division take place and microspore mother cell develop from there microspore tetrad develop from microspore tetrad microspores develop and at maturity pollen grains they are form here so this mechanism is very important for formation of pollen grains at the end of this process from sporogenous tissue number of pollen grains develop in flowering plants you can also observe pollen grains through naked eye also in shoe flower hibiscus if anther is dehiscent at maturity and you touch anther of this flower in your fingertips you can see yellowish structure that is actually pollen grain of same flower generally shape is spherical 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter it may be vary flower to flower or species to species also in the structure of pollen grain it shows two layered wall structure exine that is outermost layer in time innermost layer so typical pollen grain possess two layers exine and in time exine in detail it is outermost structure outermost layer and hard in nature one special characteristic is observed here it is having sporopollenin which is a most resistant organic material it withstand high temperature strong acids and alkali it is interesting that no enzyme can degrade this structure in this layer exine germ pores develop actually where sporopollenin layering is not observed it is absent in exine layer it is known as germ pore through this germ pores at maturity pollen tube develops it is well preserved as fossil due to sporopollenin structure in pollen grain these are some feature of exan layer of pollen grain second layer that is in time in time is actually thin continuous layer and made up of cellulose and pectin so in structure of typical pollen grain two layers exine and in time observed over and above these two layers exine and in time pollen grain show cytoplasm arrangement surrounded by plasma membrane in mature pollen grain two cells develop vegetative cell and generative cell first vegetative cell it is comparatively bigger in size and it act as a food reserve it is having large irregular shaped nucleus in its structure second cell generative cell it is comparatively smaller in size it floats in cytoplasm of vegetative cell it is spindle shaped with 
dense cytoplasm and nucleus in 60% of angiosperms pollen grains shed at two cell stage in rest of the species of angiosperm generative cell undergo mitosis division then two male cells male gametes develop before pollen shed and free cell structure now you have clear idea about internal structure of pollen grain in typical angiosperm plant flower some interesting points are also there regarding pollen grains some effects of pollen grains to human being some pollen grains they show severe allergies and bronchial epigens in human sometime through allergy of some pollen grains chronic respiratory disorders develop some examples like asthma and bronchitis in carrot grass or parthenium pollen grains causes pollen allergy so this way pollen grains can cause allergy and some respiratory disorders in human being it is not always like that it is harmful to us harmful to human being as a allergen some pollen products are there which are very useful to human kind actually pollen grains are rich in nutrients nowadays in market pollen tablets are available which act as a food supplements in western countries also it is available in the form of tablets and syrups for same purpose for sports person athletes actually it increase the performance by taking this type of pollen product and as well as in race horses also so this kind of pollen products which are rich in nutrient they are also useful for us as we know through mechanism of pollination pollen grains travel toward stigma of flower for sexual reproduction purpose now what about viability of pollen grains viability means the time period for which it can survive it can be living for the purpose of fertilization process generally pollen grains land on stigma before they lose their viability this time period may be variable it is highly variable to species to species it also depends on temperature and humidity in cereals like rice and wheat this time period is 30 minutes in some other plant families like rosaceae leguminosae and solanaceae it is for months also so this may it may be variable certain minutes to few days or few months also viability of pollen grain is very important for fertilization process one interesting point is here it is about pollen bank you have heard about seed bank you have heard about sperm bank similarly pollen bank is also there it is for storage of pollen grain this is storage for years in liquid nitrogen at temperature of minus 196 degree centigrade it is very useful for 
crop breeding programs this way pollen grain its bank pollen bank it is for storage of pollen grain for years this pollen grain from pollen bank can be useful at the particular time period for the fertilization process and in the field of agriculture it is very useful